no ang balita sa atin lahat ay lahat lahat <coughs> sino sa inyo ang mahaba tulog ng gabi oh wait lang to lang ay yung mahaba tulog ang epekto daw ng mga sandali yung mga, mga short sleep may epekto daw yon kaya napapansin sabi ng mga matatanda hindi sabi hindi ito proven scientific yun <laughs> sabi ng matatanda uh, anyway uh, kung titingnan nyo yung buhay ninyo naranasan nyo na ba na ano na pagising nyo sa umaga pag harap nyo sa lamin ang kinakausap ng sarili nyo Okay, sino na ka nakaranas mo? Yung pagkagising mo, pagharap mo sa salamin, kinakausap mo sa sarili mo. Anong sinasabi ninyo? Matanda ko ka lang. May mutak lang. Kaya bago ka, okay, yung, yung, ano, yung nakikita ko sa sarili mo sa salamin, naranasan nyo na ba yun? Uh, ang sabi nila ay, ay ang, ang pakikipag-usap daw, kaya kapag kinakausap mo sa sarili mo, It could be a sign of weakness. Well, naniniwa ano ba kayo? It's a sign. It could be a sign of weakness. Yung kinakausap mo sa sarili mo. Sino sa inyo meron sa bahay nyo ng ganyan? Yung kausap niya yung kanyang sarili. Madalas ay mag-isa lang nagsasalita. Naglalakad pa. Ito na yung proven scientifically, yun daw mga tao na matatalino ay ganon. Yung mga tao na maraming mga responsibilidad sa isip, yung mga tao na ang daming ginagawa, ang daming mga, mga area ng buhay niya nilisip, yun daw yung mga tao yun. Yung bang minsan, magtatara ka, ano siya yung kausap mo? Wala. Wala siyang kausap kundi sa sarili niya. Parang ang sinasabi niya sa sarili niya maraming bagay. So, it could be a sign of strength. Okay? So, uh, hindi niyo ba ginagawa yun sa, sa, sa buhay ninyo, sa bahay ninyo? Kapag ginagawa ninyo, ito na yung pagkakataon na ma-justify natin yung mga pinagagawa ninyo na sinasabi niyo. Meron na yung diferensya yung sama sa bahay. Now, we will justify that. Because today we will be talking about yung paano mo ipag-usap sa sarili. Is it a weakness or is it a strength? Well, it could be both. Okay, let's open our Bible to the book of Psalms, 103 verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Okay, uh, verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his, all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Teka muna. Sino kausap ni David dito? <laughs> praise the Lord, O my soul! Siguro bagong gising niya, nakita yung sarili niya. Well, praise the Lord, O my soul! Kausap niya sarili niya. Okay, verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who, sets, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Panginoon, kausapin mo po kami na in this particular moment, we pray na ang kapangyarihan mo at ang Banal Espiritu ang siyang mangusap sa aking lahat upang sa araw na ito ay muling panibagong pagpapala at tatanggapin namin mula sa inyong salita. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, ito yung passage. Now, this is the passage where David, yung bang, naalam niyo yung buhay ni David, meron din very low na, na, na siya ay so down spiritually kasi may araw doon sa buhay niya na siya ay bumagsak din. So because God is gracious, God is a God of grace, because David was supposed to be stoned to death noong, noong nakita niya na maganda yung asawa ng kanyang general, ay kinuha niya, and then they had an affair, and then, and alam niyo nangyari, kapag yung binasa niyo ni David, then it turned out na naging, naging publicly known, and then David was actually uh, confronted by the prophet Nathan. 
So, with, by the grace of God, it's not by the law, because according to the law, si David dapat ay mamatay din. He's stoned to death. But David sought the grace of God, and the grace of God is more than enough. So, after all of this, the grace of God overflowed in the life of David. Now, ito yung kausap niya ng sarili niya. Nung pagkatapos niyang manggaling doon sa madilim na parte ng kanyang buhay, he came out victorious by the grace of God. Now, here it is. Here is David talking to himself. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Kaya... Matuwa kayo. Kapag kinakausap sa rin ninyo, maghanap ka dahil kahit papano, kahit wala kang pera, marami ng kaibigan. Magsaya ka kahit papano, kahit, kahit hindi ka gaano maya, wala ka namang sakit. Dahil nakikita mo, no? Di ba ganun kinasabi natin? Ay, di bali. Kinakausap natin ng ating sarili. David was speaking to himself. Talking to himself. And saying, praise the Lord of my soul. So today, talk about what? Faith talk. Hindi naman faith Face, yeah? faith book, faith talk, talking to yourself positively. Kapag ka kausap mo sa rin yung puro negatibo, definitely that's what you get. Sabi ng mga ibang mga preachers. Talking to yourself positively. Ang tanong ay, eh, do you usually get positive results when you talk to yourself? Hindi ba, kung siya may negatibo din, but pagharap mo sa sarili, sa ralamin, at sabi mo, tamo. Dumadami ang puting buhok mo, hindi ko pa. Ang tagal mo na dito, pinusong sa salamin. Hindi, hindi ko pa na, hindi ka pa nakapagpatapos na tayo ng bahay. Ang tagal-tagal mo na dito sa kuwit, sampung taong ka na, hindi ka na pa rin. Ha, gano'n, di ba? Kasi kinakaw sa negatibong mga bagay, but do you usually get positive results when you talk to yourself? But that depends. The result of talking to us depends on what we tell ourselves. If you tell yourself positive things, you will have positive things. If you tell yourself negative things, you will end up doing and having negative thoughts. Yan ang mangyayari sa iyo. Kaya, the moment you speak to yourself, think about this. It affects the way you live. Ito yung sinasabi na ng mga ibang mga preachers na what? The power of words. Na kapag ka, you speak to yourself na ikaw ay pagpapalain mo yung araw na ito. Ikaw ay, yan ang sasalita, suswertehin ngayong araw na ito. Ah, kahit hindi magiging totoo, at least nasabihan mo yung sarili mo na ang araw na ito ay masaya pa sa iyo. So you start talking power words to your life. Ha? Kaya okay lang nakausapin yung sarili nyo as long as you talk to yourself positively. Pagising mo sa amaga, sasabihin mo, ngayong araw na ito, wala kang magiging kaaway dahil magiging nagay ka. So, <coughs> Letting go of the things. Diba? Ngayong araw na ito, magkakaroon ka ng mga gandang bagay dahil makakasalubong ka ng mga tao na puro nakangiti at magagand magandang araw ko yun. Pagdating mo sa pisina, iba na yung sitwasyon. Pagdating mo sa trabaho, iba na. But as long as you have commanded yourself, talk to the spoken words to yourself and say, this day you're going to reflect the life of Jesus in your life. If you speak that every day, positively, you will see that every end of the day ay nagiging maganda ang yung mga. Okay now, let's take a look at what other words na sinabi ni, ni David sa kanyang sarili nung siya ay nakikipag-usap sa kanyang sarili. Kung nakikita niyo siguro si David nung araw na yun, kasabihin niyo, teka, ang nakari namin namin yata ay medyo uh, may tama na. Mukhang papalitan na namin ito. So siguro pag nakita ng kanyang mga, mga ministers ito, sabi niyo, ano nga yan ito? Tulad din nyo, kapag ka nakita nyo mga kasama sa bahay na nagsasalita na minsan, may mga aksyon pa? <laughs> ano sasabihin nyo? Ano nga nga? Paano? Isa na nga tayo. Now, David was in that situation in life. Nung siya ay mag-isa lang siguro sa kanyang, sa kanyang opisina, sa kanyang oval office, o kaya sa, sa kanyang opisina bilang hari, nagsasalita pa lakad-lakad doon, may patalong-talong pa siguro. Because ano sabi niya? Praise the Lord of my soul! So siguro sabi niya, ay! Siguro ang sabi ng mga nagtatapa sa plasya, Mahari, magbalita ito, ang tama. Now, kapag nangyayari sa inyo na minsan, wala kayong kasama sa bahay pero nangingiti kayo at natatawa ko te. That means you're talking to yourself positively. Now, let's take a look at yung mga bagay na dapat sinasabi natin ng ating sarili. The basis is that, ito sabi ni David, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Your past 
is erased. If you paste that, kapag ka ibabase mo ang iyong pag-ipag-usap sa iyong sarili sa mga bagay na yan, na ang kanaharaan mo ay burado na, deleted na, at na empty recycle bin pa. Start talking to yourself in that way that your past has been erased. Ito sabi ni David, who forgives all your sins. Sino sinasabi niyo? Your sins? Sinasabi niya sa sarili niya, si Gonzalo, sabi niya, Ikaw, David, you were once a mighty warrior of the Lord and you are seated as king of Israel now. Praise God because He forgives all your sins. Kaya pagkaharap niyo sa sarili niya, sarili niya. Don't look at yourself as a I feel like mabaya ba sa mga tao. God has forgiven you your sins. Your past is erased. Alam niyo ba ang the cost of uh, spiritual disaster? Look at the life of David. It's always sin. But the good thing is, God has already forgiven whatever we have done. Ano man yung nagawa mo once you have asked the Lord for it, you have come to the Lord and repented on it, and repented about it, you have come to the Lord and asked the forgiveness and embraced the grace of God, that sin has been erased. God has already forgiven what we have done. Ito pa yung mga, mga bagay. See? Sin, what is the result? The consequence of spiritual disaster is always sorrow. It could be sickness, it could be pain or whatever. But the Bible says, when the Bible says about pain and infirmities, it talks about grief. Yung bang pagdadalamhati. It's not only about physical disease, it's not only about emotional impairment, hindi yung mga ang emotional mo ay hindi maganda o kaya ang physical mo hindi maganda. The Bible says when it talks about disease and heals your diseases, it talks about your sorrows because they are debilitating things yung, yung mga sorrow. Alam mo na, uh, a lot of sicknesses are derived from sorrow and anxieties and worry and these are of cost by sin. Dahil kapag, ka, kapag ka ikaw ay nabubuhay doon sa forgiveness and you are flowing in the forgiveness of God, your day is definitely and surely be bright and beautiful. Kaya tandaan nyo, kapag kausap niyo sarili nyo, think positive. You may have done a lot of things in the past, but declare, katulad ng sinabi ni David, my past, or talk to yourself on the mirror and say, hey, Fat guy, your sins are forgiven because your past is erased. Kapag kakausap mo yung sarili mo, Oy, ikaw na magandang tao, na sexy tao, kahit paano mo ginawa mo, humingi ka ng tao sa Panginoon, then your past has been erased. May isang kwento doon sa isang, isang, uh, isang lugar doon sa, sa Harlem, New York, na mayroong nagawang, may mga nangyaring krimen. Kaso mayroong isang witness na medyo malabo ang mata. Iisa lang yung witness. Sabi niya, nakita ko yung pumatay. Sabi ng pansan, nitsura. Medyo ganito, pero malabo mata. Medyo ganito, ganito, ganito. So, iniipon nila lahat yung mga kahawig ng, ng sinabi niya. Itim siya. Kulot. Kulot. Ganito medyo itsura. Medyo magkakahawig. Sino? Ngayon kinuha yung witness. Sino sa kanila? Salamin niya. Salamin niya. <coughs> Hindi niya ngayon makilala doon sa mga pitong yun. Dahil wala ko nga ang mata. Parang ito. Pero hindi. Parang din ito. Sabi ng mga nagkibilat ka muna. Ayusin mo muna sarili mo. Okay. Sa inami sa sasap ito. Okay. Anyway, we have invited you. And the witness is not very sure. But he sees so sure that one of you seven ay yung criminal. So, sabi ng, no, pag, pag ano pa, uh, pag-aaralan mo pa ng mabuti. So, kapag ganun pala, dinidischarge naman yung mga tao yun. They will not detain kapag ganun ang, ang proseso. So, ang ginawa, isa sa mga pitong yan talaga yung gumawa. Pero magulang siya. Noong pinawi sila, dahil alam niya na siyang gumawa, lumayo na siya. He left the place. He went to another place, southern part, and then doon siya nagbago ng buhay, nag-iba ng identity, nag-iba ng pangalan, nag-iba ng uri ng trabaho, until such time na ma-official na yung palit ng kanyang pangalan, at saka yung, yung kanyang itsura, nagbago na rin konti, umuwi siya doon sa kanila. Tapos, para gusto niya masiguro kung, kung isa pa siya sa mga 
sa mga mga, mga suspect, pinuntahan niya dun sa sa presinto. Hinahanap ko si ganitong tao, yung pangalan niya naman. Ay? Wala na. May, 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 uh, siya pa yung nasintensyahan? Hindi, meron iba. Meron na nasintensyahan para doon sa crime na yun. So, when he went back, he was in my mind. Nung pumalik siya, ganun na rin ang buhay niya na bagong-bago, siya man yung gumawa, so bagat meron ang naparusahan dahil meron itiniin yung witness na ito nga na malabong mata eh. Sa kulungan para malamit din mga ganon, nung naititiin lang pero hindi sila. Now, the point is, you, well, we are just like that person who did the crime but changed all our identities. Go back to that place, they say, it's also nothing is worth remembering because the case is closed. Kaya ikaw, kapatid, do you remember one thing that you have done in your life that really displeased the Lord that hurt or broke the, the heart of God? Meron ka bang nagawang ganon? If you go back, go to the grace of God and embrace His forgiveness and come to the, to the Lord again, He will tell you the case is closed. Your past has been erased and your that case is totally closed at hindi na magubuksan. Hindi na muli magubuhay ang mga bagay na nagawa mo sapagkat ang mga yon ay pinatawa na ng ating Diyos. Talking to yourself about your dark past will always cast a shadow on your bright present. Kapag mga negatibo, ang mga bagay na nagawa mo ng nakaraan, ang palagi mo, nilala mo sa isip mo, at sinasabi mo sa sarili mo, pinapalabo mo lang ang maliwanag mong kasalubuyan. So, my friend, have you been living in that shadow of the past na kapag ikaw mag-isa, sinasabi mo ikaw, 10 years ago, ganito ginawa mo, 5 years ago, nag-aaksaya rin yung panahon. Because when you come to the Lord with such words, you talk to yourself with such words, Jesus will say, you're talking nonsense, you're talking, wasting your time because those cases are being closed. My friends, we need to thank God for the past dahil doon tayo natututo. Sa mga bagay na nangyari sa atin, we need to thank God whatever has done in your life, whatever you have done in the past. Maganda man o mabuti, let us thank God because in them we learn. In them we have discovered that God is God. In them and through them we have learned that God is more than gracious to us and He is willing to offer us a new life and say, Forget the past. It's been erased. Let's move on. Pangalawa, your present has been made valuable or appraised. Ito ang sabi ni David. Who redeems your life? He talks about buying back from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Crowns you. Kita nyo. Yung sinabi niya, He redeems you and then He crowns you. Now if the Bible tells about redemption, it's about uh, kapag sa grip mo, ipinaliwanag yan, it's it's about buying back from the market. Or it's from the market and somebody has paid for you. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng redeem. Kaya sabi ni, sabi ni David, Somebody has bought my life back from the pit and put me into the throne when I am still the king. So present, ano yung kasalukuyan yung buhay? Is it okay? Or sometimes it is. Most of the times it's not. Think about this. If you talk to yourself in the present, you should know and you should know who you are in the eyes of God because you are what? David says, you are redeemed. Ay na, kausap niyo sa sarili, sabi niya. You have been redeemed from the pit of shame and guilt because God is so gracious. And once He removed your crown as king, dahil minsan ay tinugis siya noong nasa kasalanan pa siya sa mga madalim na nasyado pa siya ng kanyang buhay, he was out from the throne and his son was chasing him to kill him. Nawala yung kanyang corona bilang hari. But when God redeemed him, brought him back to the throne. Kaya sabi niya, God has redeemed you, you, oh my soul. Sabi niya, God has redeemed you, redeems your life from the pit and crowns you again with love and compassion. That is David. He went through a dark shadow, but his present, when you look at his present, it's all bright. 
Ang nakita niya ay what? It's about the process of his spiritual restoration. Kaya nasabi niya redeem because redemption is a very important thing. God has redeemed us from worthlessness. He was worth nothing. Nung mga araw, hindi na siya pinapansin ng kanyang mga general dahil sa mga nagawa niya mga pagkakasala. With all his mistakes and sins before the Lord, marami na sa kanyang mga general lang hindi siya nila. Hindi siya gaano pinapansin. But when God has restored him, he redeemed him. And he's worth a thing again in his life. Redemption. Think about this. You cannot pay for your salvation. You cannot pay for everything that is happening to you, but God has paid for it. Now, the product of your spiritual restoration is only one thing, respect. God has rescued us from shamefulness. You may be living in shame if you remember those past, but take note. It's not worth talking to yourself anymore. You have to talk to yourself. Kausapin mo sarili mo, my past is over. My present is here. So, God looks at you as His child. So you need to look at yourself as redeemed and restored and respected by God. Why? Because He has rescued you from shamefulness. Yung kanyang kahihiyan. Kapag ka nahihiya ka pa sa mga ginawa mo noon, say, well, it's over. Game over na yung mga bagay. And I, start to, I have to start again because my life is always continuing. Your present is a praise. Laging nagiging mas mahalaga. Meron isang kwento ng isang African boy. Uh, siya ay, bata pa siya, uh, mahilig na siya sa mga krak magagawa ng mga laruan niya. And he made a wonderful toy boat. Yung sailboat. Maliit lang. So he loved that so much. Mahal na mahal niyo. Hanggang sa isang araw na siya naglalaro sa ilog. Tinangay ng akos yung kanyang laruan. Pero hindi niya mako dahil malalim na. Umiyak siya nang umiyak. Sabi na wala. Di bali sabi niya. Gagawa. Pero hindi ko na makakagawa. Hindi na ako makakagawa ng ganun kaganda. So he started forgetting about his toy boat. Ngayon, isang araw, nung namasyal sila ng tatay niya doon sa bayan, doon sa mga, sa mga parang harad style, nakita niya ng isang toy boat. Sabi niya, Teka, parang kamukha ng aking laro na ginawa ko yun. Parang, parang yun na yun. Teka, pag nakita ko yun, meron akong inilagay ng marka sa ilalim kapag nandun yung yun yung aking. Tapos nilapitan niya, tinignan niya, yun na nga. Sabi niya, eto nga yung aking Kinawa, there's nothing wala nang buta, no doubt this is it because this is the mark that I put on it kaya lang, kinausap niya yung may alay sabi niya, uh, alam niyo po sa akin ito <laughs> anong sabi ng nang nagkit ito uy, huwag sabi sa kanil anong sayo, takong pinipenta ko yan, anong sayo sa akin yan, sabi ko anong titinta ng larawa hindi yun, eh. ito yung mark ko eh sabi niya, ito yung nilagay ko, ako gumawa nito ano ito sabi niya Store, shop, ng ano, ng laruan. Kasi pinibenta lahat ng nandito. Kaya yan, hindi sa'yo akin yan. Kung gusto mong maging iyo, bilhin mo yan. The boy went to his father and said, Do we have money because I want to buy my toy? So, binili nila. Pag uwi nila, sabi na. Here you are. You are mine. Twice you're mine. Sabi ng bata. Dalawang beses kang naging akin. Una, ginawa kita. Pangalawa, binili na. This is what God is declaring to your life. This is you. Like toy. We are all like toy. We were once made by God. And then we were born by God. Twice you are mine. So you will be mine forever. No, that's you in the present, my friend. Ito tayo sa kasalukuyan. We are that, like that toy sa kasalukuyan. Ang sabi ng Diyos, look at yourself the way I look at you because I made you and not only that, I bought you. You are mine forever. <coughs> Talking to yourself about your bright present will always shed more light to your brilliant future. Kapag kinakausap mo sa ilim sa mga bagay na magaganda na ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo, it will give more light to your future because your present will always affect your future. My friends, let us start to think of God 
for the present, that everything that is in us and everything that we have is all from God. Hindi ba minsan sabi, oh, I produced this, I did this and I did that. Look at life in the higher perspective, in a broader perspective, and you will come to know yourself that you are just a property of the living God. Once I made you, but you strayed, but I bought you, and you are mine. Talk to yourself positively about these things. And the last, your future is established. Ang iyong future, ang iyong hinaharap o ayong, ang mga bagay sa, sa mga dating pangaroon has already been established by God. Look at the, what David says. Who satisfies your desires? Meron tayo lahat niyang desire. We desire to have a nice car. We desire to have a, a healthy bank account. We desire to have properties. We desire to have this and that. Ito yung mga desire natin with good things. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. My friends, ito yung mga future natin. What are our concerns about the future? It's all about what? It's all about the fulfillment of our goals. Yung mga kaya tayo nag-aapot dito, I want to have that one day. I want to be like this one day. The fulfillment of our intended goals. This is one of our main concerns for the future. Ito yung mga sa hinaharap ay iniisip natin na sana ito yung mangyari. The fulfillment of our goals. And God says, who satisfies, and the Bible says, David says, who satisfies your desires with good things, there is satisfaction in God. God will always reward us with satisfying things. Hindi ka bibigyan ng nakakainis sa'yo. Siguro pag-asawa, bibigyan ka. Hindi ka nakakainis konti. <laughs> para mamadevelop yung mga pagkatao. Then later on, you change and everything will, ano sabi na, they live happily ever after. But satisfaction will always be guaranteed by God because if you base your life, you put your life in the hands of God, satisfaction will always be guaranteed. Katulad ng mga, mga panahon ngayon na money back, guaranteed. The fulfillment of our intended goals is in the hands of God. Na ito pa yung isang concern natin. The, the fullness of our increasing age. Naku, Panginoon, malapit na naman, matapos ang taong mo ito, madatap ka na naman ang taong. Paano ba ito? Ta ang bilis ng paglaka ng panahon, ang bilis kong tumanda, ang bilis na magpalit ng panahon. See, this is one of our concerns in the future. Napapansin nyo, kaya nga, mabenta ngayon yung mga, ano, mga anti-aging. <laughs> may mga vitamins na anti-aging, may mga lotions na anti-aging, may anong mga masa... Meron pang mga technology na anti-aging. No, billion dollar industry ang, ang bag, mga bagay nito. Why? Because as much as possible, we want to, to delay the age. But they know you cannot delay them. Maybe you can delay the wrinkles, but not the age. So it's one of our concerns, the fullness of our increasing age. Naku, ang pilis ang parang matagdala na. Naku, korenta na ako. Naku, ako 25 lang ako. Ah, gagalang gano'n siya. Tapos, wala pa siyang masawa. Oh. So, this is one of our concerns. But my friend, strength. God will always renew us in surprising ways. Ano sabi ni David? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Parang si David dito ay para siyang, para siyang zoologist. Why? Because David understood well and properly the life of an eagle. Alam niyo yung agil lang yan? Sa, sa lupa pa na nung nila David, mga agila din, ano? Siguro pinag-aaralan nila yung buhay ng agila. David has studied the life of an eagle because an eagle, the eagle is one of the most majestic birds that live on earth. Sila yung mga sinasabi natin na if we talk about power, eagle. Kaya nga, napapansin niyo yung, yung flag ng iba, may agila. Because they know the characteristics of an eagle. Na kapag ito naging mature na, no bird is more powerful than that. Kinatatakot na niya. But, do you know that the life of an eagle is a very, very, very complicated sometimes. Once it reaches maturity, ito ay nagiging mahina. See? At, at the age na ang, ang agila ay bata pa, makikita yung majestic with its wings and its beak and the eyes. Ano yung the eye of the eagle? Mga gano? Kasi malayo pa kita niya. He rises up to the high, highest heights 
and then look for prey. Yan yung makikita siya ng kanyang biktima. And with the eyes of the eagle, makikita niya yung buo sa kanyang talas ng kanyang paligid. But there is a time in the life of an eagle, once it reaches maturity, that they call it, it passes through a molting process. Ito ay yung kanyang mga pangpak na nag-alak. Kaya ang mga titibay ng mga palahibo at yung mga mga talo na mga matatalim at mga ang tuka na matatalas na nagbabago yan. Nagiging hindi siya cute. <laughs> Nalalaglag ang kanyang mga balahibo na babawasan ng kanyang pagiging cute na isang ibon. That's the molting process. And the result of that is that nang hihina rin yung kanyang mata. Nang hihina niya yung mata na hindi siya makita ng malayo. Hindi na siya makalipat ng mataas. At hindi na rin siya isang mighty eagle. Kaya nung buhay ng agal, nagpapalit yan. And then it turns out na hindi lang siya nagiging pang, nagiging useless na siya. Naging dependent na rin siya sa kanyang kapwa, agila. Nagtatago na lang siya sa kuweba at naghihintay na lang ng padala ng pagkain ng kanyang mga kapwa, agila. Until such time again, but the eagle was so patient, siya ay naghihintay hanggang sa bagay alam niya, he is hopeful that one of these days, All my strength will come back to me and all those majestic wings will grow again. Kaya no, para na siyang, para siyang talo ng manok dun sa sabungan ng itsura. Then later on, kapag si payat na payat na mahinang mahina na, then the day comes that the feathers grow again. Tutupo na naman yung kanyang mga hindi. Yung kanyang tuka na makapal na dahil sa, sa, ano, sa mga bakteriya na paman ay ipinupukok niya sa mga batot na nalaglag na yung Bumabalik na naman kanyang mga tuka. Until such time na magiging manakas na naman siya, tumubo na naman kanyang balahibo, magiging maganda na naman ang kanyang itsura. And from that cave, he will again jump out of the cave, the high elevated cave, and soar like he used to be, na katulad ng kanyang ginagawa ng naharaan. Siya muli ay lilipad ng lilipad na parang yung agila ng naharaan. That's the part of the eagle. And this is what David likened us. Itinulad niya ang kanyang sarili na ang sabi niya, ano ang sinabi niya noon? Like the eagle, God will renew your strength. You may be weak, you may be a defeated one, but God will restore you so that one day you will be like the eagle again. Talking to yourself about your brilliant future will always overshadow your dark past. Even your bright present. Kapag kakausap mo sa inyo at lagi mong sinasabi, ito ang plano ng Diyos sa akin, ito ang gusto mong gawin ng Diyos sa buhay ko. So lahat ng mga bagay na nang mapapangit na nangyari sa buhay mo ay mawawala na sa isay. Pati yung kasalukuyan mo na sinasabi mo, okay, okay na rin ito, maybe okay na rin ito. If you look ahead to your future, my friend, talk to yourself about what God has planned in your life and what God has to do in the future and you will find out that your present is incomparable hindi na magiging mas importante ang kasalukuyan mo kundi that day when God puts you into a high place and soar like the eagle. Your strength is with God. Kaya, tumatagdag man ang iyong taon sa buhay, sasabihin mo, bakit si Khaled, 80 siya, nung kinongkari niya ng mountains of Kenya. I am only 65. Wow, ganun dapat. My friends, Your future is now is regardless of what will happen to your life. Talk to yourself. You are an eagle of the Lord. Amen. Trust in God for the future. Don't trust in your in your skills. Don't trust in your title. Don't trust in your experiences. But trust in God for the future because your future is established not in your hands but in the hands of the living God. So my friend, is a kabas sa mga tao ng lagi ka usap sa nila na lang naglalas at panta. Minsan nakalukip-kip, minsan kami nasa likod. My friend, faith talk. If you have heard a message today, say, I am talking to myself, but it's going to be a faith talk. Isang pakipag-usap sa sarili ko ng punong-punong ng pananong palataya because I will talk faith to myself today. Ano yung sinabi niya ng mga bagay na yun? Keep talking to yourself positively. Kaya pagka sila, ano nga yung kakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakak
Keep quiet. I'm having a faith talk to myself. I am declaring what? Past is erased. The present is valuable and remains valuable. And my future is already established by God. Thank God for the past. What is in your past? Something that is really shameful, forget it. It's over. That past is over. And how about in the present? Think of God for the present. Whatever you have, my friend, is not yours. Whatever you have right now, I don't know is entrusted to you by us. With a charge of stewardship. Whatever capacity you have, whatever skills you have, whatever things that you have in your life, God is saying, I am giving this to you, not for you to own, but for you to use and acknowledge that I am the source of everything. Yeah. Think of God for the present, but trust in God for the future. Is your present something gloomy? You know, present way, parabang nawala ng parabang hindi sigurado. Are you, are you in a state of present where your present is coupled or clothed with uncertainty? Parang hindi sigurado. Trust in God for the future because your future is not about what you can do, my friend. Your future is about what God can and will do in our lives. Faith God. Remember this. Huwag kayong magalala. It's okay to talk to yourself as long as it's a faith talk. It's not a doubt talk. It's not a disbelief talk. It's a faith talk. Kaya kapag magbabawa na kayo, once again I tell you, don't disturb me. I'm having a faith talk. Tango na tayo.